Well, we come now to uh, a quick discussion calculation of the uh, radii, the size of the orbits of an electron in the uh, hydrogen atom. Of course, we're going to be using the Bohr model of the atom at this point. And again, this real, real basic, real quick, but uh, the concept is worth uh, uh, worth a video. So Bohr came up with a calculation for the radii of the electron orbits. And of course, the electrons are not really in orbit in our current knowledge of the atom. Um, orbit is a improper visualization for what the electrons do in the atom. It's really an electron cloud, and quantum mechanics uh, discusses that. But we're in this transition model of understanding the atom, the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom. It's sort of a blend of classical and um, modern physics. It has quantum aspects, but it uses classical physics uh, to do some of these calculations. But here we are. The radius is n squared. Again, n is the principal quantum number. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 on up, times the radius of the first Bohr orbit, where n is equal to 1. And that value, the radius of the first Bohr orbit, is 0 0.529 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. And you know that's the radius. If you double that, you get diameter. If you double this, you get about 1 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. Uh, rough, very rough, uh, and really kind of incorrect uh, calculation of the size of an atom, the diameter of the atom. But we press on. The, they're dealing with the Bohr model. What are the radii of the orbits uh, for the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom? Well, if n is equal to 1, this calculation is not too difficult. 1 squared times the Bohr radius. I'm just going to write a sub b, and that's just the Bohr radius. 0.529 times 10 minus 10 meters. What about n equals 2? Well, a little bit more complicated. We now have to put the integer 2 in here and square that times the Bohr radius. So we're going to get a factor of 4 times the result we have up here, 2.12 uh, times 10 to the minus 10. And what about n equals 3? Three? 3 squared times the uh, first Bohr orbit radius. So I have a 9 times the uh, basic Bohr radius value, so 4.76 10 to the minus 10. All these in meters. What about uh, n equals 4? Four? 4 squared times the Bohr radius. So I get 16 times this number and 8.46 times 10 to the minus 10. So those are the values just to kind of emphasize what's happening here. Um, for the n equals 2, we're getting 4 times the uh, first Bohr radius. N equals 3, we're getting 9 times the first Bohr radius. And N equals 4, we're getting 16 times the first Bohr radius. The distance is increasing quite a bit. It's not linear. The uh, electron in the N equals 4 level is not 4 times further from the nucleus than the N equal 1 electron. It's 16 times further away. It's not a linear process. The distance are growing more rapidly. They're growing as the square of n. Uh, the other thing that's a little bit interesting of this, so this is using classical physics. When we talk about quantum mechanics uh, in the near future, we'll discover that quantum mechanics depicts or calculates the probability of finding an electron in a certain range of values. And there's a maximum of this probability for hydrogen at n equals 1. Um, agreeing with the uh, the Bohr model calculation, and it's not that the Bohr model makes hydrogen or the quantum mechanics for hydrogen correct. It's that we live in a universe where this uh, Bohr model was approximately correct uh, in modeling the hydrogen atom. Fortunate that I could help uh, sort of knowledge of atoms progress, um, but fortunate that this mixed classical model does have a little bit of agreement with the quantum mechanics model. So simple calculation, n squared times the Bohr radius. So it only applies here for hydrogen, only for hydrogen.